Hi, my name is Alexander Baranov. Uh, I'm a functional consultant at, at Innovate, and I wanted to discuss today functionality uh, of advanced warehouse management that is rarely used, but could be quite an asset in any implementation. And uh, the functionality is replenishment. And specifically in this case, I wanted to show uh, is uh, about min-max replenishment, uh, not demand replenishment to sales orders, which is probably a topic for another discussion. So, so the topic of discussion is replenishment. And uh, right now I wanted to briefly discuss uh, warehouse management elements that are used in this uh, functionality and in this particular case. So first we can go to replenishment and replenishment templates. This is uh, one of the key setups and uh, this particular setup is uh, used for replenishment of fixed locations by FEFO and uh, let me explain what I mean by that. So I will remove this and uh, I will add another template and uh, talk about uh, different settings of this template and what I'm using for. So uh, replenishment templates are used uh, to select uh, between to, to, to select uh, what exactly should be run in a job if we uh, plan it uh, to be running as a regular job and for this particular case I wanted to discuss it uh, should be run as a regular job probably every 10 minutes. So for this uh, example we would need one template header. So let me call it test. Uh, we need a replenishment type of min max and uh, the other two types are used for demand based replenishment which means uh, if a sales order is missing some quantities uh, there is a uh, possibility to create automated uh, work for that to replenish a uh, location that should be used for picking. But currently we will go into another case. Uh, it's min-max replenishment. It's replenishment run between two locations regardless of demand. Uh, so we don't need wave step code because we are not using wave demand. Uh, basically we don't need uh, this checkbox and we don't need that this checkbox for this. So that's all information that we need for header. As for lines, uh, that's where it's starting to get a little bit tricky. Yeah, so first of all, always remember to fill in sequence number manually because it's uh, for some reason it's not calculated automatically in this case and uh, the tricky thing here is the uh, unit of measure which means that if your company you know if your implementation is using items with different units of measures such as uh, kilos liters I don't know pieces pallets, any other, meters. Every item type or every item that is using different inventory unit will need a different template, template line here. So for example if we have items that are using kilos, liters and meters we will need three lines total here. One will be for in this case for kilos. We don't need request type. Uh, we don't need directive code for this. We don't need work template. And for this particular case, I'm setting up minimum zero and maximum one, and I will explain it a, a little bit further down. And here I'm also fulfilling. Uh, copying the same unit of measure. And we also have two crucial settings here. One is replenish empty fixed locations and for this setup I will turn it on 
and second is replenish only fixed locations and I will turn this on as well. Uh, so now I will explain why I did that. Uh, so we have uh, what I plan. What I'm planning to do is I'm planning to enable several items for this replenishment, and I will <coughs> and I will do that by adding uh, fixed locations for those items. So if this checkbox is not turned on, uh, then empty locations will not be evaluated and uh, that is key point to understand that if you set up something that uh, it's uh, for example it's this item's fixed location and you forget about this checkbox uh, no work will be created because the system will uh, skip this location and not uh, compare its on hand to this minimum and maximum and why I'm putting 0 and 1 is because I want to replenish this location in any case right and I, I want to replenish this location and usually in my setup it's going, going to be empty because it will be emptied after uh, stock is moved there so basically this is minimum and maximum and uh, it means that it's working under usual min max uh, criteria when location on hand reaches zero fill it up until one and i will explain why i'm putting such a small uh, such a small criteria later but uh, important to know that if you put for example 10 and 20 Th that means that if your stock level will be at 8 for example it will try to replenish it up to 20 but as I as I'm saying uh, in th in this setup that I'm trying to, s to make here I will not uh, bother about what's uh, what this, this setting say as I'm going to use this line for multiple products in uh, well ideally and uh, I will need to work with what I have uh, so I not always can define exact quantities that should be fill sh should be brought in into this location and to replenish only fixed locations is because I want to speed the job up and I don't want it to run for all the inventory locations which are in on hand so in this case it will be limited only to fixed locations which I will have not at not much. So uh, product query mode is de is depending on your implementation it if you are using variants uh, which means if you're using product masters with size color and uh, other product dimensions you, you need to choose product variant query and if you choose product query it's well something without variants. And here I can select the products and that's what I was talking about when I told you about the unit that I don't want a lot of failures in my info log after I run the job. So I want to limit uh, this lines query only to items that have kilos as, they, uh, as their uh, well, inventory unit. So, for example, in order to speed things up a little bit, so I will change it to warehouse relation, uh, warehouse items, and just use unit sequence group. And well, here I don't have kilos in in uh, this environment, but that's where I would put kilos for unit sequence group uh, that has kilos. So I have created one for kilos and I won't create one for issues because my test example is set up with issues.
so just to be very explicit and here I will select again warehouse item number as a basic table and unit sequence group with each is and if I would be doing this for example for real environment I would need to set up all the unit sequence groups with each is the other way would be of course to use joins and add uh, invent table model etc but um, I don't want to spend time on that right now so that's basically a all what we are doing here. So the key points to remember is that template lines are tied to replenishment unit. So that's why I'm splitting them into lines based on the unit and I'm selecting products related to this unit of measure. Right. So now I will explain a little bit more what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find location with the best uh, FEFO date for, the, for a pallet or for a license plate in this case. In order to do this, uh, AX has a standard uh, strategy for replenishment. So here in replenishment, once again, I will remove this test option I made before. And I'm going to add uh, it once again. We will all need only one location directive for all the items. And it needs to be location directive with peak work type. It needs to have site warehouse and we will use my site warehouse for test. Uh, we don't need all of this. Um, multiple SKU you will need only if you're combining on one license plate multiple items. Usually it's, it's not done uh, at least not for the something that's in storage. Uh, well, so I'm not going to do that. But keep in mind, if you have multiple items on one license plate, uh, you need to have b two location directives: one with multiple SKU and one without multiple SKU. Um, so here I'm setting up a generic location directive. Usually I, I will not need any of these parameters. And I'm setting up one location directive action. I will call it replenish by FFO. And that's the strategy that I was talking about. It is called round up to the full LP and FFO batch. The key point here is uh, rounding up to the full LP. And now I'm coming to the that. Now I'm c I'm coming to the question of why I put uh, minimum zero and maximum one. So what the system is doing? It's evaluating empty fixed locations, and uh, if it it finds that an item has been set up for a fixed location, but it's uh, missing on this location. It's trying to fill it in with one uh, piece of inventory unit. So, for example, for one kilo of an item. Uh, then the logic behind the strategy is looking for the best available FEFA batch, as it says here. And that's why I have to put the checkbox batch enabled. And uh, you need to keep in mind if, if your implementation is using batches, especially if it's using batches as as batch above, uh, you need to turn the batch enabled checkbox on, otherwise your location directives will be uh, not very good. And I think 
Vice below also is using this. Uh, so back to the question of strategy. The strategy is searching for the best available kilo under this uh, well batch. When it finds that kilo, it uh, it looks at the loc license plate quantity total, and then it it rounds up uh, work quantity until that license plate, so that uh, you can replenish your fixed location for the full license plate quantity uh, always, regardless of how much you have on, on the license plate. So you can have variable license plates. You don't need to maintain uh, some kind of setup uh, on replenishment templates where you specify exact quantities it needs to be filled in. And uh, in this case, uh, you would need to split the license plate, pick uh, several uh, several edges from this license plate and put them into a new license plate, relabel it, and do several other things in, in the warehouse. <coughs> but in this case, you basically get suggestion to go to some specific location where this license plate is situated and get the whole license plate. Uh, which which is uh, really good if you have stock of the same item lying in many locations around the warehouse and you don't know where you have uh, your well, best FEF for date, which is first expired, first out. So you want to, s to send, for example, something that that's uh, first, first expired, first out, and you need to find it first. Or, for example, you need to move it to production area to use it for production picking. So you have multiple use for this functionality and uh, for example in this case it's searching by Pfeffer batch and there is another strategy that is just round up to full LP if, if you for example you are not using batches but well then the question is why can't you just take any <laughs> license plate that you want <coughs> So in this case, the work line will be generated, and in my case, I'm using batch above. So the work line will be will be generated with a specific batch, and it will not allow the user to change the batch or override it to another batch that would would be wrong in this case. But it does allow some flexibility within the batch. So for example, let's say you have <coughs> equal sized pallets all of the same batch, so for example five pallets of the same batch uh, and you get a suggestion for your user to go to this location where you have this these five pallets. So in this case uh, there is a, a license plate that has been defined by the system as the best one, probably alphabetically, but uh, you are allowed to to scan another license plate of the same batch so that keeps some flexibility on the user for example if they identify it if this uh, if this is a deep storage location and as a license plate identified is uh, not on the outside uh, so that's totally fine if they are all of the same batch <coughs> So now we are done with location directives, so the simplest setup as possible. The only key point is the strategy. And now we need to go to another place, which is work templates. <coughs> so work templates for replenishment. <coughs> Basically, uh, this is the point where you can have some kind of variations. And what, uh, by variations I mean uh, that you will get multiple work lines, multiple works created on of this work template or of multiple work templates. And in my case, I have used work templates as a link between item 
and the work so that my users were able to find the proper work on the item by uh, entering work template ID which I uh, made equal to item ID but it's 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 not like it's it's not mandatory it's just a solution I came up with you can come up with with some extension for example for work table that will be uh, saving item ID just as, a, as an example because my kind of setup required multiple work templates created for multiple I for every item and then in the query of the work template I have configured relations to specific items to the item number which was a lot of pain to, s to set up of course I had a job but uh, you are not always required to uh, you are not always allowed to use jobs on a customer's environment yeah so it was a lot of work to do <coughs> but right now I will not do this so I will keep this one replenishment basically it's also the simplest setup possible it has one pick and one put of the same work class that's all you need you don't need any fancy settings like this so all the job is done by the strategy in uh, location directives and as I was saying this one I used only to provide some sort of filter possibility for the items so now let's get all the pieces together and there was also one last step I need is the fixed locations and fixed locations are situated here in warehouse management setup and uh, I believe warehouse yes fixed locations and I will add a new location for my item No, sorry, it's wrong item. So this is the location I want to replenish. So it's going to be always fixed location. And in my plan, I, it in my plan, after I move something to this location, it should be emptied as quick as possible, meaning that it should be consumed or packed and uh, moved away, or something should be done about that, because uh, the other work for replenishment will be created only only after uh, this one will be emptied but of course you are not bound to do this and if you want you can for example set up minimum as uh, your full license plate quantity and that will allow you to well basically move two license plate for this license plates for example to the same location if you want <coughs> So now I'm going to run the job for replenishment and uh, the job is located here in uh, replenishment submenu and here you can see there is a selection 
of replenishment templates which in our case is not needed because we have only one so I will not set it up and also you can have multiple runs in the, in the background so now I will run the job and we'll see what it will do yeah, you have new messages, let's look at them so we have operation completed so we have replenishment template test sequence 2 created one work header <coughs> and we have replenishment template test sequence 1 created no work and you remember that test sequence 1 was uh, with kilos and well I don't have any items with kilos but test sequence 2 was with eaches and it included uh, unit sequence group with eaches so that group had the item that I have set up for fixed locations and now we have created the work for it so let's see about that work this is the work header that we see replenishment so what do I have here I have a uh, peak from location storage 1 and put to location stage 1 and if you remember stage 1 was my fixed location for this item so everything went very good here and you should remember that in, in this setup uh, for this type of replenishment you don't need put location because your put is coming from your fixed locations in, in case of a wave demand you will need to provide the put location directive if I'm not mistaken but not in this case so we see that we have work quantity 102 and uh, so that means that it was rounded up and if I check here if I check here, oh no, no I will check the first line Ch here you see that we have located license plate ID which is also a nice feature but you should remember this uh, this is not a strict requirement for this license plate ID it's just a suggestion and uh, the user will not see it in the mobile device and if uh, th there is another pallet there with uh, the same batch with the same FEFO uh, it will be okay to use the other one so let me just check what do we have in on hand for this location for these locations and you will see that in storage one we have two different batches of the same item and out of them test 2 and it has test LP02 and 102 so we can see the batch number and we see that its expiration date is 27th of January and we see in this case in the first batch that it, it is 31st of January so that's why the second batch was selected so that's how it works we are, replenish we are replenishing one location with a full license plate from another location and uh, the system doesn't need to, to s doesn't need your input into how much do we need to replenish it just rounds up until co uh, f the license plate is full as to how to process this work there may, uh, may be multiple options usually it will be 
uh, mobile device menu item for existing work something like this mode work and use existing work and uh, what's important here you can add for example if you want this item to be purely replenish specific you can add here uh, appropriate work class <laughs> Also, you have <coughs> also you have this handy feature. If you select, for example, directed by user directed, and you set handle by license plate ID. Uh, this <coughs> this checkbox governs usage of that target license plate ID that I showed you before. It's uh, usually it's found by the system and populated on work ID by the system. And then this menu item will look only at target at no not at, sorry not on target license plate IDs but on located license plate IDs. Located license plate ID is populated on the peak line. So when you have this checkbox turned on, you will be able to scan only license plate IDs that were that exist in the located functionality. So for example, you can use this uh, and then go through the warehouse and just scan the license plates and you will get suggestions on where to put them, where they need to go. And this is this might be handy if you have for example a large area unsorted area with license plates and all of them have some kind of fixed location and you need to quickly put them away so you can set you can configure this basic setup that I have dis d explained here and in in this case it, it didn't well we have spent about half an hour talking about this but if you just do the setup it will take about 15 minutes and then you can use this mobile device menu to quickly put away your license plates. That's an example of using that. In, m in my case, in my implementation, we have used a uh, system grouping field and then for system grouping field we used work template and I, I have explained to you that I have uh, basically copied item ID into work template code for so I have created work template for every item that we had on the list that in that case it was about 200 of items for one side and well that was long activity to do that but then uh, the user can just scan the item ID and, and he will get suggestion on where to put this item. So that was the setup that we have used. So as I said, there are mal maybe multiple use uses of this functionality. And uh, it is quite flexible and it allows you to not bother about variable license plates quantity or something like that. So hope this session was useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I am always happy to provide any details and uh, see you sometime later. Thanks for listening. Bye.